Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session this evening. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our amazing panelists at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off, so we are not able to hear nor see you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation will be recorded, so in case you miss anything, you will have access to review the entire presentation within about a week or so. With that said, I'm gonna turn it over to our first presenter, St. Joseph's University. All right, hi everyone, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna pull up my slide here really quickly and we'll get going. All right, hi everyone, my name is Abby Morris. I'm an Associate Director of Admission at St. Joseph's University and I'm very excited that you're all here tonight um, to learn a, bit, a little bit about all of our colleges. Um, so I work with students who attend high school in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, the great state of Ohio and homeschooled applicants. And at St. Joe's, your admissions counselor is also your financial aid counselor. So um, we're really knowledgeable and can typically answer just about any question that you might have or are very happy to help find the answer for you if we can't um, tell you off of our head. Um, so we were founded in 1851. St. Joe's is Philadelphia's Catholic Jesuit institution. There are 27 Jesuit colleges throughout the US. And one of my fun facts about being at a Jesuit school is we actually share our alumni networks with each other. So it really expands your, your potential reach post-graduation um, beyond just St. Joe's and Philadelphia to um, global um, reach. Uh, you can reach a lot of different places um, with the Jesuit network. Uh, our education is a liberal arts based education that is anchored in intellectual rigor, reflection and social justice. You do not have to be Catholic or religious at all to come to St. Joe's and enjoy your time at St. Joe's. Um, I would say that students, uh, the typical student at St. Joe's uh, is involved in some sort of community service. That's where a lot of students will show their faith, whatever faith background they have. Um, so that is a very popular thing to do. And tied to the community service is often um, a, a ritual of uh, reflection on what, what are you doing and, and what how have you been able to give back to your community? We uh, currently have about 4,500 undergraduate students coming from 50 states and 50 countries. Uh, our uh, campus is located on City Line Avenue, City Avenue in Philadelphia. So half of our campus is literally in Philadelphia and the other half is in Montgomery County. Uh, so you can say that we are uh, a little bit of a Goldilocks campus, the best of both worlds. You, you have the city buses that run right through the middle of campus that will help you get around town, uh, but it has a little bit of a suburban feel as well. So um, a really beautiful campus. And this is just a quick little snapshot in the picture. Um, that's uh, the Barbalyn Bell Tower, uh, a fun building on campus. We have three schools. We have the College of Arts and Sciences, the Hobbs School of Business, and a newer school, and that's the School for Health Studies and Education. Uh, another thing that I really love about St. Joseph's University is that we are major blind for admission purposes. So when you apply to St. Joe's, you're actually applying uh, to every major. And when you're admitted, you're admitted to every major. So if you change your mind about what it is that you'd like to study, no big deal. You can easily change your, your major um, throughout the application process or before you start classes or even during the, your first couple of years. You'll work with an academic advisor to uh, fill out a quick piece of paper uh, to make sure it's not going to delay your graduation. Um, and then you can switch your major, not a big deal. Uh, it's also very easy to do a double major or add a minor at St. Joe's. 65% uh, of our most recent graduating class graduated with a double major and or a minor. So um, the, the curriculum is very flexible. Uh, we want you to be able to customize your educational experience. We are test optional and have been since 2014, and we will remain that way. Uh, we're also test optional for merit-based scholarships as well. Um, you, if you apply test optional, you do not have to submit any additional essays or do any interviews or anything. You're just simply telling us, I don't want you to consider my test scores, and that's all you need to do. 
Uh, one more statistic that we're very proud of at St. Joe's is that we are in the top 3% of universities and alumni earnings 10 years after graduation. Uh, so something that we think a lot about at St. Joe's is that we are preparing students not only for their first job, but for their last job too. We want to teach you to be a critical thinker so that you're ready uh, for whatever it is that you choose down the line for your, your uh, professional path. We have really fantastic internship opportunities and also co-op opportunities opportunities. Uh, Co-op is where you can work full time during the school year. Uh, we do two full semester co-op opportunities and students still graduate in four years. It doesn't cost anything extra to do and it's for our business majors, math, computer science, physics, and we're expanding to more majors every year. Um, we are open for in-person campus tours and we would love to show you around. So um, please take a look at sju.edu slash visit and come take a look. And I'd love to see you on campus soon. Uh, with that, I'm gonna toss it over to um, my colleague at Millersville University, Joshua. Thank you so much, Abby. Hi everybody, and thank you for hopping on this evening. My name is Josh, I'm Assistant Director of Admissions, and uh, we're really excited to talk a little bit about Millersville University tonight. So uh, to get started, um, here's my contact information. We'll also you know, have that for you guys at the end. If you have any questions, you're welcome to get in touch with us. But to get started, I'd like to introduce you to our president at Millersville, Dr. Daniel Ruba. Now, believe it or not, Dr. Ruba is not just our 15th president at Millersville, he's also a king from Ghana, Africa. So not every college can say that their president is also a king, but that's exactly who we have here at Millersville. So we do receive Ghanaian delegations on our campus. He has taken students with him to Africa as well. But Dr. Ruba is extremely intelligent and very compassionate. He was actually working with Anthony Fauci over the summer at the United Nations on how to safely reopen college campuses during the pandemic. So right now at Millersville, we're 80% online and 20% in person. And what we're gonna do starting this summer is we're gonna be flipping that. So we're gonna be 80% in person, 20% online. And that's also our plan for the fall to be 80% in person, 20% online as we start to transition back. Some really helpful information about Millersville. We're a state-owned university in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So there are 14 state schools that are owned by the state, and we're actually the very first one. So Millersville is nearly 200 years old, and we're a medium-sized state school. So we're not too big, and we're not too small. We have about 7,000 undergraduate students at Millersville, and about 1,000 graduate students doing either their master's or their doctorate. Most of our students, being a state school, come from Pennsylvania, but about 15% of our students come from out of state, and we're about 5% international. Other helpful information, we, our average class size is probably very similar to what you have in high school. We have about between 25 and 30 students per class. And the other nice thing is that at Millersville, because we're a predominantly undergraduate university, we will always have an expert in the front of your classroom so we don't use TAs, teaching assistants at Millersville. Our location is, we're awesome. Our location is actually awesome. Um, we're located about an hour from Philly, an hour from Baltimore. We're very close to Harrisburg, but we have students doing internships in DC, Philly, New York City. So it's, it's an absolutely fantastic location if you're looking for a smart place to go to college. But my favorite thing about our location is that you can go 10 minutes to our south and be in the middle of an Amish cornfield. Or you could go 10 minutes to our west and get the Turkey Hill Farm where they make all the ice cream. And last year, one of our biology students was the ice cream taste tester for them. Or you could go 10 minutes to our east and be in the middle of downtown Lancaster, which is a city of 60,000 people. And that's where our students go for things like coffee shops, bookshops, nightlife, so while we do have some of those things in our little town of Millersville, by not having too much of that, it helps keep our campus very safe and very park-like. You've got everything you could want within 10 minutes of campus. One of the great things about Millersville is all of the different programs that we offer. So programs like biology, business, English, um, education, these are some of our larger programs, but we also offer some things that are pretty unique and hard to find. 
For example, Millersville is the only state-owned university in Pennsylvania to offer programs like meteorology, artificial intelligence, music industry, entertainment technology. So we've got some really cool things happening on campus. So whether you know exactly what you wanna study when you go to college, or you're not entirely sure, chances are pretty good that we've got something just right for you at Millersville with one of our over 100 programs. Very quickly, our academics are top notch, they should be, that's why we want you to come to us, but we have a ton of stuff to do outside the classroom as well. So we've got fraternities, sororities, religious organizations, a marching band, a football team. I mean, our swimming pool on campus even has a sound system in it, so you can hear music when you're underwater. So whether you're the kid who wants to go to college to make friends from all around the world, or maybe you're the gamer that has the headphones on until 3 a.m. blowing up zombies, there are people like you on our campus. So at a place like Millersville, you never have to worry about being alone. Okay, now very quickly, our costs, if you're a Pennsylvania resident, are extremely affordable. So our tuition and fees together, those come to about $6,000 a semester. If you wanna have a residence hall room and meal plan, you're looking at about $26,000 for the year, which is about half the cost of most private schools right off the bat. We do offer merit scholarship and most of our students do receive some type of financial aid. The last thing I have here for you is if you're thinking about applying, Millersville is test optional, so you are not required to send SAT or ACTs. And we do also accept the common app, but we have our own application as well. It's completely up to you as to which one you wanna send us, but you know, you're welcome to do both. We do accept AP scores of three or higher. And in most cases, a dual enrollment class of a C or higher will also come through as credit. Uh, now I'll thank you all for your time and I'll uh, pass it off to my colleague at Dickinson College. Hi, thank you, Josh. I'm gonna share my screen and go full screen here to um, walk you through some information about Dickinson. So my name is Angie Fernandez Barone. Um, I am both a, a Dickinson alum and a member of the admissions staff. I'm also a Dickinson mom. Um, really excited to help you get to know Dickinson, uh, which is a small liberal arts college located in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Um, there are a few bits of, of information here that I'll expand on as we move through, but um, I want to talk a little bit about the information you see across the middle of your screen, the success of our, our students and our graduates in getting to some really great hands-on experiences. Um, we'll talk, you see up there in the top left corner about small classes and close work with faculty. Um, and we'll talk a bit about the global program that you see noted there on the bottom left and about sustainability programs noted here across the bottom. Let's Let's dig in on some more. So the academic program, we've actually just approved our 46th major in data analytics. Um, we see about half of our majors, about half of our students focused in areas that are interdisciplinary. And I'll show you a bit more of what that looks like. Um, maybe most importantly, note that we have an eight to one student faculty ratio. We are a completely undergraduate college. So there are no graduate students uh, to, to take a place in line ahead of you uh, to get to those research opportunities. You could be doing research as early as your first year and you will work directly with uh, full faculty throughout your experience in classes that average 14. So we have over 2000 students. They come from all over the country and all over the world and there's that wonderful diversity to draw from. But when they come together in the classroom, I think that's really where the smallness is felt. Um, great opportunity to do hands-on work and to be really engaged in a back and forth discussion, debate, conversation um, with your peers and your faculty. So this is a list of all of the academic programs. 45 of our majors are here in red and then uh, data analytics will soon be added. Our two uh, newest majors, data analytics and quantitative economics, um, really show the focus on STEM fields. Sometimes people hear liberal arts colleges uh, and, and think that that will mean only work in the humanities, maybe the social sciences, but actually the STEM programs are very, very strong. Um, most of our students have a major that they pair with either a minor, a certificate program, or a second major. Uh, so it's certainly possible to be involved um, with multiple departments. And I mentioned that a little over half of our students 
are majoring in areas that are interdisciplinary. A great example of that is international business and management, which is our largest, our most popular major. So some of the things that in terms of personality of the college, uh, I think will really give you a feel for the place. Dickinson is hugely focused on global education. Uh, and that has to do with where our students come from, uh, but also where our students go. We have a, one of the most popular study abroad programs in the US. Um, these pins on the map show you where the Dickinson programs are located. And then we have partnerships with just dozens and dozens of additional um, programs so that the majority of our students will do study abroad. Um, and Dickinson has been called out, I, I sort of called out the little uh, symbol here for the Senator Simon Award in Comprehensive Internationalization. We won that award the year that it was first offered, couldn't apply then for several years because they wanted to recognize other programs. And then in the first year that we were eligible to apply again, we became the only college to win it twice. Um, this global program is, is truly uh, one of the very best in the nation. We also are really focused on sustainability, and you can see a couple of accolades noted here, but um, the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education has named us the number one college among all colleges and universities in the country for sustainability, and um, just a, a personal um, uh, accolade, personal favorite among those accolades is um, our campus becoming carbon neutral. Uh, we now announced that on Earth Day, uh, spring 2020. Um, lots of things to do on campus. Our students come from all over. Um, they are from all over the country, all around the globe. And so they live on campus and they stay on the weekends, tend to be really involved in activities and there are tons of things to do. Um, our graduates are really successful and, and end of the day, this is what you need to know. You know. We see acceptance rates into law school of 94%, med school 95%, 98% is the um, portion of our graduated class that is employed in grad school, professional internships uh, and fellowships. Our graduates do very, very well. We do guarantee an internship for every student who wants one. Um, and we see, as I said before, students doing things like hands-on research as early as the first year of college that can make for um, some really strong elements of your resume when you go out there. And I think that's where we see that, that graduate success. So we're located in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which is about 20 minutes outside of Harrisburg um, and within an hour and a half of Baltimore, within two hours of DC and Philly and um, even a, a day trip distance to New York. Um, really cute county seat. So it's, it's like a town that has um, some interesting things going on, really great little shops and it's kind of foodie. Um, it's also been called one of the best college towns, one of the most livable cities. Um, a strongest town contest winner, my favorite, not yet on here, is that we were named one of the safest college towns as well. Um, so we're in a, in a beautiful location and would love for you to, to come and visit. Here's some quick uh, bits of information about uh, the admission and financial aid and scholarship programs. And I'd simply note that with just over 2,000 students, we have over $60 million set aside for scholarships and financial aid um, to make sure that that we can fund those students who want to be at Dickinson. And I'll end with this so that you can jot down my contact information. I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions um, down the road. And I will pass it off to Ellen. Hi everyone, I know it says Ellen Ellis, uh, but my name is actually Ashley Deal. I'm an admissions counselor for uh, Columbus College of Art and Design or CCAD. Uh, as an admissions counselor, my job is to assist you through the entire college admissions process. Um, but today I'll be giving you uh, more information on CCAD. So if we were to look at CCAD at a glance, uh, we are a private nonprofit college. And so we are 141 years old. So we're one of the oldest art and design schools within the country. And normally we have about 1100 students. So that's gonna equal out to a ratio of about nine students per instructor. Uh, so this works well because it means that your classes are small enough uh, that students are able to receive that personalized one-on-one -on -one attention from professors, uh, but also large enough that you're able to discuss your pieces uh, with others within your class, right? So you, you can get that constructive feedback um, that will assist you in your development as an artist. 
at CCAD, uh, you will graduate with a bachelor's in fine arts uh, or a BFA in the major of your choice. Uh, we have 11 majors at CCAD, uh, along with numerous minors and concentrations as well. Uh, we have a very popular business minor uh, that students like to utilize. Uh, but you can read more about each individual minor and our concentrations and the majors as well, um, along with the facilities and some examples of student works on our website at ccad.edu. Uh, but also on our website is the application, right? So we are still accepting applications for this fall 2021 year. Um, and we still have scholarships and grants available to award to students as well. When it comes to the actual application, it's made of three main components. So there's going to be your GPA. Uh, there's your, um, we'll pull those from your transcripts. And then there will be your essay, which you can choose one of the three prompts that are available. Uh, my recommendation is that you choose the one that you feel that you can write the most originally and the most creative about. Uh, and then that last portion is your portfolio. And so that will contain eight to 15 pieces that really illustrate you as an artist, right? So your passions and your creative ability as well. Now, when it comes to career development, uh, CCAD and the Columbus art scene really provides students uh, with the chances to network and develop relationships with individuals that are already within the industry. Um, we know that it's not only important what type of skill set you have, but it's also important with um, who you know, right? So students that are interested in writing scripts would be likely to uh, want to meet someone like Angela Thomas, uh, who is an independent filmmaker, screenwriter, and novelist. Uh, for students that are interested in maybe creating their own designer brand, uh, Susana Madrid, uh, who after she graduated from CCAD, moved to Milano, Italy, and uh, got to work with Neil Barrett to eventually launch her own luxury shoe line. Um, so her shoes are being sold in Paris, but also here in the US of A, uh, not too far from us, about 15 minutes from us here in Columbus, Ohio, uh, in Grandview. Uh, another CCAD alum that you might want to get to know, for those students that are interested in animation, um, there is Dan Scanlon, and he has directed Disney animations like this, Onward and Monsters University, um, but also worked alongside other creators uh, for other Disney features as well. So uh, regardless of their major, our alums really utilize the creative community that we have um, alongside with the resources that we have to offer as well. So whether it be the clubs or the organizations or the actual support services that CCAD has. Uh, for example, we have career services, which not only is a resource that assists students in finding internships and co-op opportunities, uh, but they also assist in writing your resume and teaching those interview skills that are so important to actually landing the job. Uh, they do the recruiting on campus series as well, and that invites employers from big name companies like Pixar or Under Armour, Fisher Price uh, to give presentations or host networking events. They also uh, provide feedback to student portfolios or even interview students as well. Uh, Career Services also does the CCAD job board, which is an awesome opportunity for students and alums. Uh, they can find employment or internship opportunities there, and they're posted by individuals or employers that um, are specifically looking to hire CCAD students, and that's because they know the value of a CCAD education. So with all that being said, you might be asking why Columbus, right? Um, as someone that is somewhat recently moved to Columbus myself, uh, I can honestly say that it's a wonderful city, especially for young professionals and especially for creative young professionals. Uh, we are one of the top 10 cities for recent college graduates um, and also the fastest growing major metropolitan area within the US. Uh, we definitely have a thriving artistic community. Uh, we host events like the International uh, Film and Alumni Festival. Um, and we also have areas like the Short North District, uh, which is like uh, showcases homegrown and international talents. But we also have an indie art scene um, that really thrives in the old converted warehouses that we have um, within Columbus. So if CCAD and the Columbus area sounds like a good match for you, uh, please feel free to scan this QR code. Um, but if you are more interested in maybe sending your questions to us, admissions at ccad.edu would be the place to send those. 
Um, but I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen and slide it over to Mississippi State University. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm also going to work to share my screen. Maybe. Okay. Um, well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, uh, spending your evening with us. I know there's a lot you could be doing, um, but exploring all of these different options is definitely beneficial to you guys and just taking the time to learn a little bit about all these different opportunities and educating yourself. So. Again, welcome. My name is Grant Naren. I work uh, with, with Mississippi State University as the Assistant Director of Recruitment. I have been working with the university for about six years now here. I'm actually located in the DMV area, so in Washington, D.C., um, but I recruit and work with all students from Pennsylvania. Uh, so super glad uh, to be working with all of you in this region uh, throughout the Northeast. And so uh, just happy to kind of educate you on some different opportunities located here at Mississippi State. So just to give you some background knowledge about Mississippi State, we were founded in 1878 as Mississippi A&M. The A&M standing for Agricultural and Mechanics of so Engineering. Uh, so we do have a strong STEM foundation. Since then, we've acquired a lot of other um, academic majors and you will see those listed in different academic colleges. And we have over about 180 different majors to offer students. So you definitely have some options when it comes to Mississippi State and what you wanna pursue as your um, degree. So we are a large southeastern. We're we're a southeastern. Uh, we're in the southeastern conference, um, and so we're a large institution. Uh, we have about twenty three thousand students on our campus. Um, but you kind of get the best of both because you get the feeling of being a part of a large university and institution that has some national recognition within the conference. Um, but then we also have small intimate learning environments. Our average class size for entering freshmen is about forty five students. We still have a 17 to one student faculty ratio. So you kind of get the best of both, get the large rah-rah, but then you also get that small intimate learning environment that students thrive and succeed in. We do have about 4,200 acres of campus. We are the largest institution in the state of Mississippi, uh, but that is not just our main campus. That also includes our surrounding uh, areas around campus. We have a North Farm and a South Farm and research institutions um, that students take advantage of because we are a tier one top 100 Carnegie Research Institution. Uh, so basically just a bunch of fancy words for uh, research opportunities for undergraduate students starting your freshman year on campus. Uh, throughout all of our different academic colleges and majors, you have research opportunities accessible to you. Um, so what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about some of those offerings uh, as we kind of work through some of this. First, we have our College of Ag and Life Sciences. As I mentioned earlier, our foundation was ag. So if you're interested um, in anything in terms of that, we have awesome opportunities for students. They're doing a lot of research with the USDA to help eradicate food, hung food hunger and enhance food safety quality. Uh, so again, a lot of options there. Our College of Architecture, Art and Design is actually, um, it's a top 25 program of architecture in uh, North America. So we definitely encourage you to check that out. The programs within this academic college, graphic design, interior design, they're all studio based. So students are coming in setting up workshops. And it's very hands-on strategic and a very intimate learning environment for students to be um, thriving within that field. Arts and sciences, uh, we have a lot. This is what I like to call the ology family. So it's the widest array of options that we do offer the students. Definitely encourage you to explore those. One of the fun facts from this academic college one, of, one in every three of the nation's meteorologists actually had their certification from Mississippi State. We have a joke that if they get the weather wrong, they obviously went elsewhere. College of Business has fantastic traditional business degree majors plus international business. College of Education, obviously your educational opportunities in engineering. Biggest thing with engineering, we have pretty much everything that is encompassed within engineering. Um, and we like to tell students that we offer fantastic co-opt and internships. 93% of our students who graduate from our engineering program have a job prior to graduation. Then we have our College of Forest Resources, so um, sustainable bioproducts, um, environmental conservation, forestry itself, just a lot of different options there. We have veterinary medicine program, so if you're interested in becoming a vet, we do have that option for you as well. There's only 34 in the country and we are one of those. Um, we also have some honors, an honors college on campus that you can apply to uh, after acceptance to Mississippi State. Uh, to gain more access to research there. To, so to let you know a little bit about where we're located, we are located in Starkville, Mississippi. Uh, it's about two hours north of our state capital of Jackson, Mississippi, three hours south of Memphis, Tennessee, 
and two hours west of Birmingham, Alabama. So you have three inch larger international airports uh, within a two hour radius of campus, um, but we also have a regional airport that's about 15 minutes down the road. So you definitely have some fantastic options uh, in terms of accessibility. Student life, there's over 450 student organizations. So I promise you that you can figure out a way to get plugged in and get involved. My biggest piece of advice to you, no matter where you end up, get involved in some capacity because student research shows that student success, students are more successful if they get involved in at least one student organization. So we definitely wanna make sure that you do that in your time and your undergraduate. If you are interested in applying to Mississippi State, just to let you know, you can apply through Common App Coalition or our institutional application. We do have an application fee, we require the transcript, but we are test optional. So I definitely encourage you to check us out. We do practice rolling admissions, so you can apply throughout the school year. We are about $35,000 total of that it includes non-resident tuition fees, housing, and meal plans. So that is your total cost of atten estimated attendance. Um, and we're going to help you uh, explore all of the all of those different opportunities through a lot of different scholarships. Um, I work with students directly in helping you bring that cost as low as possible to make it as affordable as possible. So we definitely want you to um, just kind of explore all of those options with us. If you have any questions, uh, you can definitely come visit with us. We do virtual, we do physical campus visits, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, just kind of let us know and I'm happy to kind of navigate that for you. Um, here's my contact information. You can scan that QR code if you're interested in gaining more information about Mississippi State. And I think that is about all I have. Um, so again, thank you for joining us this evening. And now I'm actually going to hand it over to Brandon, I believe at the University of Miami. Thank you, Grant. I really appreciate that. That was a really awesome presentation. If you'll give me just a second here, I will share as well. All right, so I need my glasses. I'm gonna keep this short. There's quite a bit to go over, so I'm gonna go a little bit quickly. First and foremost, welcome to the Opportunity of Miami. My name is Brandon Wise Masters. I'm one of the directors of enrollment management and admission operations here at the U. First and foremost, I would like to get rid of my face. I would like to give you a little bit of a few fast facts. We were founded in 1925. We are represented by over 10,000 undergraduate students who represent over 100 different countries. We offer over 180 different majors and programs and our average class size is between 16 and 27, averaging 14 to 26 when we actually break it down. 92% of our first years do return for their sophomore year because they love the weather and the academics. And we are a division one athletic school, which means we are pretty good at football. A little bit more about our student population is that we have 35% Floridian students, 57% non-Floridian residents, 8% international students, 51% are about female and 49% just about are male. Of all of our students, 55% speak two or more languages. We do have nine different undergraduate schools and colleges, as well as two graduate schools, including arts and sciences, engineering, music, business, the School of Marine and Atmospheric Science, architecture, communication, education and human development, nursing and health studies. And our graduate programs are medicine and law. So if you're interested in those, we have the perfect peer program for those. And something that I wanted to get to pretty quickly was our Cognates program. Something that really sets the University of Miami apart from any other university is this program. Typically, when you go to college, you have 60 general credit hours where they make you take two maths, two Englishes, two sciences, two histories, et cetera, and so on, before you start your major your junior year. We don't like that. We want you to be able to try before you buy and really know what you're getting into. So let's say you're interested in aerospace engineering, philosophy, and sports communication. You take all three courses your freshman year, your first semester, and you decide, I love aerospace engineering. We're just gonna let you take more classes related to aerospace engineering. That'll become the bulk of your coursework. That'll become your cognate one or your major. You also liked philosophy, not as much as engineering, but more than sports communication. So you took the second most courses in philosophy. That'll become your cognate two. Very easily becomes a second major or a minor, depending on what you wanna do. And then finally, sports communication was fun, not your favorite, but you liked it. So you took three courses in it, maybe four. That becomes your Cognate three or your minor. We let you become the architect of your own academic design. We also love to have our students involved because we are a smaller campus with only about 10,000 students. There's a lot of opportunity to get involved. 
We have over 300 student-led and student-run clubs and organizations, including Spectrum, our LGBTQIA plus initiative, uh, the Marine Mammal Rescue Team, Alternative Breaks and Hyrology, but our most popular club is scuba diving. We take out on the boat on the weekends and you get to hang out and just spend time on the water with the scientists. It's awesome. Our location is pretty cool too. We're in Coral Gables, which is an artificial suburb created within Miami. It's very, very safe, very quiet. Um, we are one of the number one best cities for food and coffee. If you love cafecito or tequeños, Cuban food is really good here. Um, we have everything you could ever want. We have a metro, very similar to New York, takes you into Brickell, which is our financial district. There is Coral Gables, which is the neighborhood that we live in. Downtown is the city everyone's more used to, and Wynwood, which is our arts district. Very cool. A little bit more about our admitted student profile. We had about 40,000 applications last year. This year we have about 44,000. Our admission rate is about a 33%. SAT fell between a 13, 20, 14, 60. ACT was between a 30 and a 34, but we are test optional. So if you are not a strong test taker or you believe your strengths lie elsewhere, be test optional. Send me an essay, let me advocate for you and why you should be here because I care to learn about you to the heart of you more than just you being some numbers. Our another number though, is our average GPA is a 3.7. They go up and down and students get admitted pretty evenly from um, all three of our major choices, early action, early decision one and two, and regular decision. And that is my very quick uh, presentation for you. If you have any questions, let me figure out how to get your screen back here. Um, anybody got an idea? Not super used to Zoom. There we go. I'm going to put my information here in the chat for you. If you need anything at all, email me. I'll connect you with Tamara. She is your regional representative. If you need anything otherwise, I'm happy to help you out too. For now, I'm going to pass it back to uh, Jasmine, our facilitator. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brandon. Um, so with that said, that concludes the presentation portion of our college fair, um, but we are going to transition to the Q&A portion. Um, feel free if you have questions to drop them in the Q&A. Um, I'm also going to invite all of our amazing panelists to return. Um, and so we'll start with our first presenter. I'll just pose the question to you. So what advice would you give to someone going through the college admissions process? I'll start. Um, again, I'm Abby from St. Joseph's University, in case you got here a little bit late. Um, let's see. Um, I would say uh, be true to yourself. Um, you know, it's you should definitely listen to advice from friends and family members who have gone through the college process, um, your parents and everything. They are smart people with lots of uh, good information to share, um, but you might end up at your parents' dream college if you're not true to yourself. Um, so think about what is important to you. Uh, I think half of this process is maybe more than half is figuring out what you don't like. Um, maybe you thought that you always wanted to go to a large research institution, but then when you get there, you're like, uh, there's something about this that isn't just what I would always imagine. So um, it's okay to backtrack or change your mind about things. And just, again, be true to yourself. That's my advice. I would kind of like to follow up on that very similarly. When you are applying, the biggest misstep that we see is that you do write down Stuff like, who's my hero? Oh, my mom, my dad, my grandma, et cetera, and so on. You tell me why they're excellent, why they're amazing. And then I want to admit your mom, your grandma, your best friend. Tell me who you are so we can get to know you, like I said, to the heart of you, because we advocate for you. We get to know you. We are your number one biggest fan, and we're here to help you get into your dream school. So make sure that you tell us what makes you excellent. Don't be afraid to brag on yourself here. This is your moment. And if I could build on that, um, we want you to, to really bring you to this process. We want to get to know you, um, but don't let this process feel like a judgment of who you are as a person in a way that that you suffer through this process. We want this to be a learning opportunity for you. We're excited to get to know you, um, but it's in the nature of, of selective admissions processes that we can't admit everyone that we wish that we could. Um, don't let that 
throw you off. Know that there are a lot of great opportunities out there to be had um, and, and go out there, put your best foot forward, um, but keep your chin up as you move through the process. I think I would say just going off of that, uh, I love how we're building blocks here, um, but uh, as Angela just mentioned, there are a lot of great opportunities out there for you guys. I mean, just listening to each one of my colleagues here, um, each of these institutions sound very interesting and uh, just learning about all the different opportunities and access that you have. So one of the biggest things, I think a lot of you guys have this misconception that we're, yes, we're recruiters and we want you to come to our school, but we're always in your corner. Um, and so we just want you to succeed. Uh, and it's definitely, a, it's very important to assess the fit um, I like to guide my students and tell them there's not necessarily a right or a wrong. It's just what's best uh, and what's best for you. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head as you kind of start this journey. And if you're already on this journey, um, just realize again, it's what's best suited for you. For sure. And I can, again, build off of that there. Um, and mine's going to be a little bit more particular because I've only ever worked at an art inst institution, right? So ours is finding that good fit um, for an art institution and making sure that you can put forth your best would be to reach out to your admissions counselor, um, especially since we have that very particular type of requirements for an application, um, the portfolio especially. Uh, reaching out to your admissions counselor, doing a portfolio review before you actually submit your application can allow you to not only find out if CCAD or whatever every other school um, is the best fit for you, um, but also allows you to put forth your best, right? Because you've received that feedback about your works um, before you actually submit them. So reaching out to your admission counselor can really make the difference. All right. So with that said, that concludes our presentation um, for today, uh, but I do have a few closing announcements. Um, so the first, as you close out your Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions, but please complete the survey. It's very useful and helpful for us as we aim to improve our virtual college fairs um, in the future. Again, feel free to sign up for additional sessions, right? Um, I think it could be very, very useful as you're exploring your, your college options. And then finally, um, in case you want to review our session today, feel free to visit our website, which is strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. With that said, I want to thank our amazing panelists for joining us and for sharing information about their institutions. Greatly appreciate it. But also thank you to all of our attendees for taking time out of your busy day um, to join us. With that said, I hope everyone has a great evening. Um, and thank you so much again. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.